All right. <laughs> so like we said, we're going to use um, our free ebook, The Case for an Independent Left Party. Uh, the link is in the chat. You can get it. You know, it, it's super short, right? Um, one of the re reasons I love this ebook and one of the reasons why we talk about it and push it so much is it's incredibly short and digestible, right? The whole thing is less than 30 pages total. Each, I, I don't think there's a section probably that's more than two pages, right? So, and, and it's pieced out in a way that makes it so you could read one section, discuss it, read one section, discuss it, right? In your local or in your locals and things like that. So that's our model, right? Um, for this workshop, we did rearrange it a little. So let's talk about what we have first, right? It's a, it, before we start having a conversation on what we should have, we need to make sure we have a firm understanding of what we do have. And here in the United States, we have what are called memberless parties. Um, the party tends to be tightly controlled by insiders that know the rules. Um, insiders tend to be elected officials and staff putting in staff putting the party under political donor control rather than accountable to voters or the public. Uh, donors pay for access to insiders. Insiders then use that money to campaign and get insiders reelected to keep the, keep up the cycle, right? Where this is how the institutional uh, parts of the Republican and Democratic parties work. Um, party conventions are now patronage rituals for fundraising and marketing, um, just like any other capitalist enterprises, rather than deliberative gatherings. Um, you know, the, it used to be that the, the presidential candidates were decided at the uh, at the nominating conventions, and now they are, you know, like that says, just giant PR shows. And then, without a membership structure, voters do not have any rights or duties within the party, and therefore, typically, there's no course of action within the party against representatives and officers that don't represent them. Um, so, you know, the big a, a big problem with parties and how they exist and how they manifest in the United States is that, um, you know, I think the key there is, is, a real key there is the bottom, is that last point, right? There's no membership structure. Um, parties don't, when people say they're a Democrat, I don't know what that means other than they vote Democrat when they vote. Um, because for the most part, and there are exceptions, right? Uh, there, there are people who, uh, serve as precinct committee people there are people who might go to you know a local membership meeting or something like that um but for the most part voters have no active role within their party um they don't have an active role really in any way other than voting um most of them aren't even voting in primaries right where you actually might where your vote might actually say one way or the other um where you are on policies that are in debate within um, you know, within within the Democratic Party. So, like, if you're a if you're one of the ninety plus percent of Democrats that support Medicare for, supported Medicare for all in 2020, and knew you were voting Democrat, you know, come general election, the only chance you got to make that expression of your support for for Medicare for all was during the primary, right? That, that's the only time, and, and most voters don't vote in the primary. Mm -hmm. um, because once it once it came time to actually, uh, you know, be in the general election, Medicare for all wasn't on the table, right? The, the Democratic your, the Democratic nominee had said he would veto it if it even if it got passed. Um, so when you have these voter based parties where that's the only identifier you have, um, it really means that the people have no control. Mm -hmm. The people have no power. Um, we even saw in. Um, was it Nevada, where a progressive slate took control of the state party? Yeah, the Nevada DSA, I think, actually yeah. took over the state party. And they got people yeah. elected to enough positions that they had a majority in the state party. And with, I don't remember if it was within a year. It was just recently that they put out this letter. Um, but they recently put out a letter within a year or two of, of actually succeeding in taking power that it was impossible to reform the Democratic Party. <laughs> that even from positions of power, they couldn't, they yeah. could not break the hold, and uh, they advocated for a break. Yeah, and and see, I, their letter touches on basically the I think the two key points from this slide. That first, when the DSA took over the state party, the donors for the Nevada Democratic Party weren't going to support uh, people that claim to be socialist and all. So all of the donors left 
all of the money left. Um, the old leadership of the party literally transferred out all of the money to to other Democratic campaign committees so that this, the Nevada State Party had nothing left, basically. And they didn't have money to pay staffers and stuff, so the staffers left and went to go support other Democratic Party things. So um, the Nevada Democratic Party that was taken over by DSA had basically nothing left because it, they had no donors. Um, and they also didn't have this membership structure. Um, uh, so they couldn't participate in the rest of the Democratic Party, which essentially locked them out. Um, so, uh, you know, we see kind of the problems on the slide and, and exactly their experience at trying to take over a, a state party. Um, and this is this lack of membership is really the fundamental issue with with all capitalist parties, um, not just Republicans and Democrats. But, you know, we, we see that in, in um, even other parties that we'll talk about. Um, you're, you're not a member, you're just a voter, and so you don't have any influence, you don't have any say, you don't have any vote on internal party policy. So, for example, when uh, presidential candidates are picked and all, they also technically put together uh, a platform and stuff like that. Do you vote on the platform? No, it's it's party insiders, it's super delegates. All of those folks put together what they want to see the Democratic Party doing, uh, not what, you know, uh, not with the input of um, the... the grassroots mem uh, people because there are no members in the Democratic Party. I actually just found their statement and put it in the chat. Um, so folks can 